Hello and welcome. My name is Antonin Januska and this is part of my um, How I Work series and I'll be talking about the command tar. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. So tar is one of those commands that you probably copy pasted a million times from a guide when you were setting up Linux, when you were setting up Golang or Node.js or whatever it is, but it might not be a command that you've actually gotten to use by yourself before. Um, and one of the reasons I think is that um, a lot of the flags and the command itself looks and feels confusing. If you try to just use the help menu, it's it's a lot of options. It's a lot of options. It's a very, uh, I want to say, power user tool. Like it has the ability to to do everything um, you know a power user might want in a single command without using another you know command to pipe it into. But for somebody like me, who's just a developer. I want to know how I can create a tarball. What is a tarball? What is a tar anyway? So a tar is an archive file. Essentially what that means is that you can have a folder and many folders and files all put together to create a single file. You might be f familiar with this concept from like zips or rar files, right? So a zip file is a type of an archive Fi uh, archive file, right? It's one file that represents many different files. And interestingly enough, zip file also compresses that data. Tar does not compress by default, but you can actually pass a flag in to compress it, and I'll show you how to do that. So a tar is really useful, and it's still being used today despite being a pretty old standard. So I pulled up a few different things, and one of them is that is Node.js. If you look at Node.js bi binaries, you'll see that the macOS binary has the ability to be downloaded as a tar.gz. So tar is that tarball. And the second extension is the type of algorithm that, or the type of tool that compressed it. So gz stands for gunzip, or, GZ, or not gunzip, sorry, gzip. And gzip is a se tool separate from like a regular zip. So don't confuse the two, <laughs> confusingly enough. But GZ, uh, gzip is pretty commonly used in a lot of different ways. For example, um, gzip by itself without tar is used when you request data. Um, let's see, so you'll see that the size of Node.js main.js is 7.6 kilobytes, but the transfer is 2.68. How did that magic happen? Most of the time when you transfer uh, a website from some other, from somewhere else, it'll be compressed in some way. I'm trying to find a way it's compressed here, but I am also horrible at doing this. So you see accept encoding, it accepts gzip. So your browser itself will decode gzip when it comes in. I don't see it. It's content encoding BR. I'm not familiar with what BR is, but I'm guessing BR, oh, Brotly. Is it Brotly? BR yeah, is it? BR is for broadly algorithm, so it's a different type of encoding. But um, yeah, so you will commonly find that your browser um, actually gets served gzip files and you don't know about it. And again, source code is downloaded as a tar.gz. And just to show you that .gz is not the only extension you'll find, um, you'll see on the bottom of my screen, it's really hard to see, but this file, the this binary is actually tar xz and xz i don't know what that stands for and it's a different type of compression so let's go back to our tar file so let's say we wanted to create a whole backup file of a single file of a folder called my archive um, if you wanted to send over my archive to somebody else make it available on your website um, drop it into slack or something you might open it in your windows Ex explorer finder Nautilus or whatever other application you use, right click it and just say add to archive or compress or something like that. And it'll do all of that hard work for you automatically. What you can do instead, if you wanna do go to tarway, is type in tar and then we want to, well, let me walk you through the flags because I think the flags are the confusing part but you don't need to know that many. If you wanna create an archive, you have to pass in a dash C. C stands for create. Um, you can pass in a dash V, 
that is a flag that you'll often see and it stands for verbose that is something that you'll see common across many unix tools where dash v means verbose we're, we're going to skip it to make it easier and you can do dash f and the dash f is necessary because we want to create an archive and we want to st store it into a specific file you may be wondering why why would i need that dash f where else would you store it um, tar is a pipeable program which means that you can pass data in from a pipe like from another command or if you just want to create an archive right yeah it has nowhere to write refusing to write archive content to the terminal so you can actually you can actually pass it and and pipe it into a, a completely different program and as you can see tar is to letting you know that hey there is no reason for me to pass this to you in the terminal let's see if we can just make it display something yeah it's, it's refusing to i'm sure that if i did something like this and or this and try to pipe it into an, an archive file yeah it would work um but because we don't want to deal with piping and, and piping it just it does not make sense in our use case what we can do is do that dash f we want to store the contents of the tar into this tar file um, then you can actually specify as many files as you want that go com that get compressed in there in our case we're going to do just one folder but let's just say you wanted to compress your zsh rc in there for some reason as well it'll create an archive with my archive folder and the .zsh rc file as well so you can pass in as many files as you want to and it'll add each individual one into the tar into the tarball which is the tar uh, tarball is like i want to say colloquial in a way but that is the way to spec to talk about an archive so we just created one and that's fantastic and i don't think i can open it but just trust me that it's there um, if we want to compress it, and this is kind of the other, th this is like an extra flag that you can learn here, you pass in an A, which means auto compress. And the reason it's called auto compress is because it'll look at the final extension of your archive and use the correct algorithm. So if we did an XZ, I don't think I have the tool for an XZ uh, compression on my machine. But we can try it out, but it should it should figure out which tool to use to compress the resulting algorithm looks like I do have it I don't know what an XZ file is there we go so what we're gonna do instead again keep it simple tar.gz dash calf create auto compress file so maybe if you're if you have like some kind of memory or whatever like if you want to remember this um, the the flags are calf create auto compress file and that's what you're telling tar to do it's really awesome that you can do this what we're going to do now is we're going to move that archive Ooh, which tar do you want that's kind of fun we're going to move it into an extracted folder that i created earlier and we're going to try to extract this archive so similarly you start with tar and then you create a different set of flags the first one is x x stands for extract so instead of telling tar to create with a c we tell it to extract with an x and then we can just do f because we want to extract the file again if we wanted to just pipe something in we might just want to leave it like this but instead if we're not piping in we're actually selecting a file we're going to do this huh did that work it did and if we go into my archive yep it has that readme that I created so now we have two identical folders and you'll notice that I didn't have to specify an A or anything like that tar already knows that hey this is a gzipped file I just need to unzip it um, ungzip it along the way let's see if we can go ahead and we're gonna get out of that folder we're gonna go ahead and move over that uh, that XZ file All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and do that command again. Um, try to in your head just kind of envision doing this command so that it's a little bit easier. You do tar, we wanna extract a file, and now we just need to find it. Whoops, I put in a folder. Tar.exe. Sounds like 
sounds like I've set, uh, sounds like my dogs are going off. Well, that's fun during a recording. All right, I hope they're done because I don't want to re redo this video. I really don't want to redo this video. Otherwise, I would have redone it, redone it at this point. God, <laughs> I also don't want to edit it. So let's get back to it. My dogs aside, um, we should be able to just run this, and it'll overwrite what we had. So let's 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 delete that folder so we can make sure that we are actually getting some content. All right. So now we just use the XZ algorithm, and it still works. Nice. Lastly, I want to show you. So again dash x for extract a file my archive whatever it is right to create tar we want to create an auto compressed file that's how it works um, so one thing to show you real quick we're gonna move over move that last tar file over and I want to show you the difference in size so first let's look at the size of the original file right so the my archive has that four kilobyte stub that tells you that it's in a directory and inside of the directory we have a readme that has no content so it's zero bytes so it should be technically zero bytes to create this and possibly it might be four kilobytes to create that stub if we go into the extract that folder and look at the size of all of these different archives we'll see immediately right this is the tar Sorry, this is the, the original archive. This is the extracted archive we created. We'll see that the, the basic tarball is actually 100 kilo, or not 100, 10 kilobytes in size. So just bundling all of those files together created a, a, an archive file much bigger than what we had, right? Four kilobytes max for the my archive stub, right? I don't entirely know how Linux works with these directory stubs, but just a tarball of that same data is more than twice as big. But the second you run it through gun, uh, gzip, you get 262 bytes. That is smaller than the four kilobyte stub. It's a little bit larger than an empty file, but obviously you're gonna see, you know, on, a, on larger archives with more complicated data, you're gonna see bigger wins. Tar.xz, no idea what algorithm that is, 200 bytes. So it, it is worth it to compress. But back in the day before compression, you would download a full tar and all you needed to really do is you, you just needed that folder and there was no way for you to download a folder with contents and subfolders and more contents and subfolders off the internet or, or otherwise. This made it so much easier and because you can run a checksum, and I'm not going through that because I feel like I don't know how to do that and I, I'm just I'm a little bit worried there. but. If you wanted to, you could run a checksum on this. And a lot of websites, when you're trying to download um, a file, they'll provide a checksum that you can um, that you can compare against. Also, you know, I, I showed that it's Node.js, but Golang uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, if you try to download Golang. Again, tar.gz right here and go. That's the source. It's tar.gz. The Linux is tar.gz. It's just, it's a little bit, it's fascinating. It's just, it's everywhere. And now here we have the checksums. Um, you know, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and download this one file, right? And we're going to walk through this. We're going to create, let's see, Golang. CD Golang. We're gonna go ahead and do a w get on it. Hopefully, it's a yeah, it's a whoops. W get. That's another tool I should probably go through. All right, so we downloaded it. Now, how do you extract that file again? Tar. Extract file. And what is it? Go something. And because it's not verbose, we don't actually see all of the files being extracted. Cool. So now we have a folder. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. So. Let's go ahead and tar that go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and tar, uh, tar, wait, we're not gonna compress that go fo folder into go.tar and see how big it is without compression. So without compression, we are at 94.2 megabytes. With compression, it's 20.6 megabytes. And again, we went through the, 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 the um, 
we went through the steps again. So let's go ahead and see if Tar has any helpful... Let's see, do I have FZF? I don't have FZF. All right, let's see if Tar has any useful, um, you know, options for us to be able to see what the checksum is. Checkpoint, no. See, this is, there are just so many options, and I think all of these options are just way too much. Even this, the Z unzip, like, filter the, the archive through compress. Um, yeah, that's fine, but look at how many different ways there are of doing this when you can just do a dash A for auto compress, and it'll use that suffix for you. We have a J. Yeah, the XZ. I don't know what the XZ is. I really want to know. LZIP? BZIP? I don't know. BZIP. I wonder if BZIP is broadly that we just saw. We have capital V. I don't even know what that does. Format. That is just so many things here. Do they not have a checksum? Is that a separate program that we have to use for this? Verify. Attempt to verify the archive after writing it. I like that. Um, keep old files. Again, so many different options here. Sparse. Incremental check device. I don't need that. Extract. See? X for extract. Update. That is pretty cool that you can do an update or an append. That's awesome. Catenate. Concatenate. That makes it confusing. <laughs> uh, exclude. Another X. No recursion. C. Huh. Let's see. Tar get checksum. Tarball. Mm hmm. So there is an actual s separate command for doing this. So let's go ahead and, and check that out. So M md5 sum. Yeah, it exists. Fantastic. And so let's do an MD5 sum on that. And that is a conf confusing, complicated one. Um, we downloaded this this one over here. The sum does not match. Oh, it's a SHA-256. Can I do that? Oh, I can. All right, that looks a little bit better. Why am I not seeing it? There it is. E4, whatever. Interesting. So it actually does not match. That I don't know how to feel about that. I do not know how to feel about that. Oh, I closed it. That's why. E4, A, D. It's, it's hard to see here, but they're actually matching. So that is how you um, do a checksum on your, uh, on your files. And this is what you can do with a tar, but you can't do that with a folder. Anyways, that's about it. I don't use tar very often, but I use it often enough that I felt really uncomfortable not knowing how it works and not knowing the, the, um, the shortcuts and all the different ways I can manipulate a, an archive. I hope this was helpful and see you next time.